I've been thinking a lot recently about like um, masculine and feminine energy. And obviously these are, you know, you would think like, okay, men are more masculine, women are more feminine. And I think generally they are, but actually we, we both possess these energies within us. I don't know if that's something that like, you know, as part of your guys study as like behavior experts that, you know, you guys sort of take reference to, um, because it's generally considered, I suppose, a more kind of Eastern philosophy. Um, but is that something you guys ever think about or consider? Uh, that's such an interesting question. Can you explain to me a little bit more about what an example would be of a masculine or a feminine energy? Sure. So like a feminine energy is someone that's probably a bit more nurturing, a bit more um, loving. Um, it's also uh, like more chaos, uh, a bit disorganized, um, and maybe like goes with the flow. And then the masculine energy is more about like sort of action taking, structure, um, um, you know, like a, a, a sort of strong hand and direct kind of energy. Um, so, you know, you often do find that like, you know, guys are a bit more like that and, and women are a bit more, you know, say feminine. And, and this is actually where um, a lot of, I think, relationships fail is because we don't actually understand each other's energies, you know, mm -hmm. and um, you know, like say a guy that he's like very organized and, um, you know, he, him and his wife have a child and, uh, the wife is like a little bit more like, um, chaotic cause she's also looking after the child. And then you, and then he's like, why is she not doing this? And why is she not doing that? And then there's just these sort of big sort of eruptions because they don't actually understand that, you know, they are really different people and they have these different type of, um, tendencies towards these different energies. Um, so, you know, things ultimately fail because people then don't understand it and they don't talk about it. Um, so those are the kind of things. I don't know if that makes it a bit more clear. Yeah, it does. And I wouldn't say that I've done any particular research on masculine or feminine energies. Um, but from where you're from what you're talking about, it makes me think of, you know, one thing that I get asked an awful lot at the end of my talks, actually, there's always two questions I get asked is how long does it take to break a habit? And how do we support other people that want to create change in their lives? Or how do we get other people to support us when we're we're going through changes? And this will be relevant, so bear with me. Um, but, you know, one of the things in terms of support is that often we don't understand what type of support works best for us. And we don't understand what type of support those others in our, our lives have strengths in. Um, and so, you know, we often think, oh, so-and-so isn't supporting me, you know, say with, you know, um, after just having a child. Um, but we haven't asked for support or we haven't directed them for support. So when we talk about that masculine energy, maybe, you know, your other half is someone that needs structure. And so actually asking for support in a really structured way um, can actually really help them in, you know, feel empowered to help you. Or maybe they're a really direct person. So they need to be told directly, well, actually, I need to do these childcare things. So I need you to do the, you know, the car registration and, you know, um, cleaning out the shed and doing the hoovering and doing the laundry or whatever it happens to be that, you know, are tend to be your strength. Um, and this is where a lot of people fall down when it comes to seeking social support is they don't understand firstly, what type of support do they need um, and what type of support is going to be most helpful for them in the situation, as well as the other person's strengths and support. Um, and I would say, you know, if you're if you're like, I don't know what type of support works well for me, um, it might be useful to do a bit of support audit just over the next couple of days and just reflect on, OK, well, you know, when was a time, it's going to make me sound like I'm interviewing, you know, but, you know, when was a time in work where you felt you were really supported or when you were in university or you did a, you know, a course or a bit of education where you felt really supported or, um, you know, what are those people that you gravitate towards on social media? You know, what type of support types do they give? Are they those nurturing people? And are those the words that you need to hear? And often a way of actually really understanding what kind of support, what kind of words you need to hear is to ask yourself, as an exercise I often do, um, I've totally spoiled the exercise now, but um, I'll, I'll, like, I'll talk you through it quickly. Um, I'm in um, some of my self-compassion talks where I get people to, you know, to sit down kind of um, in, their, in their minds with a friend 
and and say they've got five minutes with that friend and the friend is going through a bit of a struggle and um, maybe it's you know there's a new new child in the house and they're trying to work out their roles and understand how they can divide labor without you know um biting off their other half's head um or you know maybe they're they're trying to um you know achieve a, a certain goal in life at work or physically or whatever it happens to be and, and I say, OK, you've got five minutes with this friend. You know, what are the words that this friend needs to hear? What are the words of encouragement that they need to hear right now? What would you tell them? And and we are, I get people to write this down. And it's often things like, you know, you're doing the best that you can with the resources that you have. Please ask for my help. I'm here for you. All of these kind of really kind things. And then I get them to read it back. And later I get to them to use this language because actually the language that we write down that we would give to a friend is actually the exact language that we need to hear ourselves. Mm -hmm. And those are the exact support strategies that we often need to have for ourselves. And it's a really insightful exercise because naturally we're also good at kind of lending support and seeing how other people need support. You know, we're tribal beings. Um, but it's that internal support and that understanding that we miss. And so it may be that nurturing support or maybe that structured support or like you talk about, you know, it might be masculine energies or feminine energy. Um, and that's the kind of support you need. But actually, when you go through that exercise or if you just notice over the next couple of days when you're chatting with a friend or who you gravitate towards in social media or kind of what books are you reading? What support are you looking for? Um, that will give you a bit of guidance into actually what support is, again, going back to the Chris and Neff exercise, it's going to be most nourishing or most supportive of you now. And then the second piece is really asking um, other people, you know, what kind of support works best for them or how best can you empower them to support you and talking that through as well. Because they may say, yeah, actually asking me direct questions instead of being passive aggressive is going to be a lot more helpful. Or um, I'm actually, you know, not very quick to see those things that you see on this. Maybe, you know, that's a task for you. And actually, I'm going to manage these things because I know that I have more capabilities of this. And so we need to empower and enable people if we want to support them. You know, we're not mind readers and we don't really fully understand or know our own ways of needing support, let alone others. And so we need to be a little bit more vocal around that if we want to get the support that we need.